Hello and welcome to this week's EMBN show. Now on last week's show, we had a load of the latest new e-mountain bikes from 2020. Now sometimes we get pulled up that we don't cover enough of a wide range of price points of the bikes on this show. But today we have got a selection of bikes under three grand. So as you can see, we've got a bit of an Alpine set going on on this week's EMBN show for a little bit of Apre bike. Uh, Chris Smith, how's the Apre bike looking down in Somerset? It's not looking too Apre actually, Steve. It's looking very wet down here in Somerset. The shed is actually dripping water and I'm catching it with saucepans as we speak. I think uh, I'm gonna be lucky not to be floating off down the river, hopefully uh, this show. <laughs> think about it as being a mountain shed, Chris. Up in the hills. <laughs> Up above Morzine or Leger, and you can see, you know, you've got a bit of saucy sawn and some olives and some wine and cheese. I'll squint hard and we might imagine that, Steve. I'll try my best. <laughs> right, let's move on to e-mountain bikes under three grand. Now, like uh, Chris, as I mentioned earlier, we sometimes get pulled up that we don't talk about these uh, less expensive bikes on the show, but that's incorrect. There are a ton of them out there. So Chris, let's we have a bit of a, let's have a bit of a pick and mix of what's on offer in the e-mountain bike world under 3,000, shall we? Cool, yeah, let's how do about, it. How about we start off with a hardtail? Now, I know that I'm, you know, in the past, I might not have been into hardtails too much, but I think I'd rather see someone get a hardtail with good geometry and a good motor and a good battery rather than someone buy an e-mountain bike with bad geometry and suspension, which is more like a spring than any totally, suspension. Totally, totally, yeah, I 100% agree. Uh, and I'm looking at the Specialized Turbo Lever Hardtail. Good choice, uh, good choice. Range of sizes, £2,249. I don't know what the trans translation is to euros there. 29 inch wheels, 100mm travel fork up front, uh, Shimano componentry, and a 400 watt hour battery, which, if you think about it on a hardtail, is actually going to give you a good range because there's going to be less resistance and you'll probably be riding uh, uh, forest roads on that. Now, I'm going to move on from hardtail to this bike, which is the Zubu Zubop. Oh, have is I a got good that one. right? Is it, is it Zubop or Zubop? Zubop. Zubop. You've got that one right, Steve. Great bike. <laughs> now, this is a bike which is uh, largely available in the UK from Halfords. It's aluminium, it's 120 mil travel, E7000 Shimano motor in there, 504 watt hour battery. It's got a dropper post, 24 kilos, Maxxis tires, uh, RockShox suspension front and rear, and Shimano hydraulic discs. I mean, come on, that's not bad, right? Does get good, doesn't it? And I think both that you mentioned there, hugely capable bikes, large capacity batteries, mid-drive motors. I think I've got a couple more here for you, Steve. Full suspension bikes. I'm gonna... Not for me, Chris, not for me. <laughs> this for is full everybody. Stuff. This is uh, from Giant. So this is one of the biggest bike manufacturers out there. And I think this is a great looking bike. This is the Giant Stance E Plus. Looking at the parts on it, well, it's available for a starters, 2,600 to 2.9 thousand pounds. So it's good, uh, great buy. Uh, sync drive motor, which we know is produced by Yamaha. And that obviously connects to the giant app too, so you can tweak all those motor settings within the app. 400 or 500 watt hour battery, depending on the model. 120 mil travel, aluminum frame, Tektro hydraulic brakes. Uh, but I notice there's no dropper on this one, but then it's got Shimano gears, Good range of sizing on that as well, but I think, you know, recommend getting out there for a test ride to make sure you've got the right bike. Yeah, do you think, do you know, uh, to butt in there, do you think, do you think people might be in a, a bit of a, a difficult situation when you're looking at maybe £2,899 for a, for a bike with a 400 watt hour battery, but you can you maybe put in a maybe £200 more and get a 500 watt hour battery? What yeah. do you think, what's your feelings on that? I think I always go for that bigger, that's one of the things I'd recommend is always go for that biggest battery you can afford. It does make the difference. So yeah, I think if you can afford that 500, then go for it. Um, but another option here, Cubes. So you've got the Cube Stereo Hybrid 120 Pro 500. Now, again, we see a lot of these Cubes on the show, especially in the bike vault, seems quite a, a popular choice. And this comes in at 299, uh, 2,999 pounds, four sizes, 24.3 kilos. And just check that pea green color out, that is amazing. Got the Gen 4 Bosch motor on there, 500 watt hour integrated battery, although you can actually get 625 for this as well. Uh, it's 120 mm travel frame, 29 inch wheels, hydraulic discs, but again, no drop on that. But again, you can just upgrade that as something, you know, you can add that little bit more money to and put a drop yeah. on there if you so wish. 
Yeah, I think you know we'll talk about we'll talk about maybe some of the upgrades later on. But that pea green color was wow. Well, I'm I'm sold on that. But again, comes back to that whole question about whether you should go for 500 watt hours or on that cube bike there, the option to go for 625 watt hours, but you're gonna spend a couple of hundred pounds more. Now, high bike has got uh, an S0 full seven 1.0, which is the least expensive bike in the full on their full suspension category. Uh, it's available online or from dealers. Uh, 2,249. Pounds, it's gonna be the I cheapest full suspension bike, surely. That that's good value, I think. It's great, it's got I, great bike. That's Sorry. great. Two thousand. I mean, like, like I said, for for people who who say that you know we don't talk about the less expensive bikes, or for maybe people who have got an idea in their heads that e mountain bikes are crazy expensive. I think that proves you know in that selection of of bikes we got there that you know that's not quite the case. Uh, I want to just pop in that the, there's a Shimano PWSE motor and 120 uh, millimeters of travel on that high bike. But yeah, you know we are seeing from that range of bikes there the bikes have motors and batteries which you will find on bikes twice the price so um, it's incredible but one thing I will say though Chris is that when I've been looking through these bikes here the sizing on them does does tend to be a little bit smaller than you definitely. might find on some of the larger bikes so yeah, what yeah. I'd recommend to that. people is definitely get to a demo day or to your shop and chat these things through uh, with with people to to make sure you get the right size in. Uh, Chris what about uh, let's move on to what about Canyon? What's, Canyon what's yeah. The offering of, I mean we recently had the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. Well funny enough Steve that's exactly what I, I want to talk about so the Grand Canyon coming in from uh, Grand Canyon coming in from Canyon. Uh, as well specs hardtail, that's coming in at 2799, aluminium frame, and that comes in a load of sizes for this one. And we see a, woman, a woman's version on the market too. 21.4 kilos, so that's pretty lightweight for a big powered bike. 120 mil RockShox Judy fork up front. It's even got 203 millimeter rotors on this bike with twin pot calipers, so they've really put the thought into the braking on this. Big 2.6 Schwalbe tires on there to sting out the trail. You know, just what you need on those hardtails. Integrated 504 watt hour battery, Shimano E8000 motor. It's just finished off with loads of nice kit. You've got the EE specific saddle on there. Just a nice looking bike. Do you know what? I'm, I'm thinking as we're going through this this selection, this pick and mix of bikes from uh, our Alpine set, uh, that the weight of these bikes, you know, you just mentioned that Canyon, 21.4 kilos. There was the high bike, which is 22, 23 kilos, full suspension. That these aren't really too dissimilar to bikes that are possibly twice the cost. Exactly. So, so yeah, I think, you know, we, like I said, we'll talk about upgrading later, but uh, something to think about nevertheless. Uh, now, I'm gonna pull another hardtail into the mix here. The Cannondale. This is uh, the Trail Neo, and uh, this is a 2,600 uh, pounds, or is it euros? Two, yeah, it's 2,600. It's an alloy frame, 100 mil travel fork, Shimano Dio gear and and brakes, E7000 motor from Yamaha, and of course an integrated 504 battery. I mean, that's another thing to think about. Do you want to go integrated or do you want to go external? Do you know, I'm thinking, Chris, there's something missing. There is something missing from our list. <laughs> and it's... It's uh, it, it's the um, decathlon, French decathlon, French decathlon, brand. decathlon, Steve. French brand, French brand. That's it. So uh, decathlon. We, we saw these bikes at Rock Deserve Festival uh, last year. Incredible what what you get on those bikes. And this, I think, actually blows my mind. I'm glad you brought that up, Steve. I mean, we've got the decathlon stylus. And first up, the componentry on this bike. Well, I'll tell you first. It comes in at two six nine nine. So it's super. You know, two thousand seven hundred quid. Fourth generation Bosch performance line motor on there, 500 watt hour integrated battery, SRAM Eagle gear in, hydraulic discs on there, it's got a dropper, 150 mil travel, rock shock suspension front and rear, and it weighs in at 24 kilos. I gotta say, a fantastic pick and mix there, even if we, if we say so ourselves. Now, um, I can see that many people might be thinking, whoa, should, should we go for, you know, the bike which is two to 300 pound more, which gives you a larger capacity battery. I'm thinking, 
Maybe we should give a top five tips for people buying e-mountain bikes under £3,000. Uh, Chris, I'm going to start off with sizing. Now, I've looked at the website of most of the companies of the bikes we've looked at, and if you go to the geometry chart, you'll see the reach measurement, which is a reasonably good idea of the size of the bike. Actually varies quite a lot between the different bikes. So uh, my my suggestion is you get yourselves to a bike, a bike shop or maybe to a demo day to actually get to sit on these bikes and ride them to make sure you're getting the right size. Yeah, number definitely. Two, Chris. Think, number two. Yeah, number two. I think adding to that, Steve, I think is the suspension on the bike. Now, this is where sometimes manufacturers might save a little bit of money where they add it into other areas on the bike. So the suspension, maybe if it's front or rear, could possibly be upgraded. And you just want to make sure you're not attacking that full-on sort of terrain with basically a spring that's just going to bounce you around. You want a quality suspension fork on there, and that might mean upgrading at some point. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, uh, I'm going to bring in tyres at number three because uh, tyres will have a big impact on the type of terrain you'll be able to go to on your e-mountain bike. Some of you might be riding forest roads, in which case a low profile hard compound tyre is great. However, if you want to get off road into more challenging terrain, then something a bit softer, more grippy and more aggressive is definitely going to give you uh, increased comfort and control out on the trail. Right, as we, as we move swiftly on to tip number four, uh, I see that Chris has got a little helper there to uh, talk him through maybe, what should we talk through? Maybe the cost of upgrading? Yeah, I think Cody knows a little bit about that, don't you? Or not? Yeah? <laughs> now I think in with the um, cost of upgrading, there's quite often different levels of uh, bikes available in the range. You know, you get the base model, you get the mid model and the high end model. I, just need, I think you need to think about how much money you're actually going to spend on that bike to get it to the bike that you want it to be. You know, if you are thinking about adding a few hundred pounds to that base model, then maybe you do need to think about getting that mid model and then it's going to fit the box rather than spending a load of extra cash on it, I think. Yeah, but uh, have no fear. So most of these bikes that we've uh, been through on the show so far will be massively capable. And that brings us on to point number five is the application which you intend using this bike for. Now, if, like I said, if you're gonna be riding forest roads or maybe gentle single track, then a hardtail will be fantastic for the job in hand. However, if in the future you see yourself getting up into the mountains into more challenging terrain, and have a think about that when you're buying, your first sub £3,000 e-mountain bike. Let us know your thoughts on the bikes. Chris, you still there? No. I'm still here. Cody, you still there? He's still here. Cool, Cody's thoughts on the bikes we chose? Uh, what do you think about the bikes Hot we chose not? today? Hot or not? Hot or not? Hot. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Right, the big news this week is Verbia e-mountain bike festival is go! I can't wait, as you know, yeah, I didn't manage to uh, get to the Tour de Mont Blanc. I did ride the bike park for a bit, so the area I know is absolutely amazing for riding. And I can't wait to get back out there this year, Steve. Yeah, I mean, let's talk us through some of the details of the Verbia e-mountain bike festival is you've got loads of e-mountain bike brands there and you've got the chance to buy a ticket, I think which was 15 euros, and you get, as I say, you get a chance to ride any e-mountain bike you want in the most ridiculous scenery on some of the widest range of, of trails you can ever imagine. Now, as I mentioned, one, one of the things I'd like to get back there to do is the Tour de Gamonde, where you can go, you can pick your new mountain bike, you can wander up the huts, you can drink some wine, eat some cheese, and head to the next one, and that's definitely on my list. But um, definitely. I thought, I think if you're, if you're an e-mountain bike enthusiast, or if you're looking to buy an e-mountain bike, what a great place to go to, Chris. Definitely. I think what blew me away when I first arrived at the festival was how many e-bike brands there were. That, you know, the e-bike village literally went on throughout the whole town. It was amazing, wasn't it? Literally lined every, you know, every side of the street with e-bike brands, tents, demo bikes, anything e-bike, and it was there. It was, uh, it was an amazing time. Yeah. And the scenery is literally mind-blowing, and even the bike park was amazing there as well. So yeah, 100% get down there. Uh, but of course, there's one more thing which we haven't talked about is the Waymark trails, which are in Verbia. So you can go and get your e-mountain bike or a range of e-mountain bikes. Go there with your mates, go with your family, take them out, follow a Waymark route, either easy, medium or hard. Or alternatively, get a guide or go for a guided ride, which is another experience uh, again. Uh, plus, of course, you've got the Tour Mont Blanc. So, uh, but I don't know what the details are on that. I think that's going ahead this year, but whatever. Get yourselves over to Verbier between July and September and you will have 
a right ball. Right, coming up this week on EMBN on the channel, we have got a load of cool content and kicking it off on Friday, we are taking a look at one bike and the two ways that me and Steve set up our bikes differently. So this is on our high bike Xduro models. As I said, I mentioned we've got the same bike, but we set them up pretty differently, don't we, Steve? But there is one big difference between your bike and mine, which we cannot reveal until next week. What could it be? Could it be the suspension? Could it be the tires? Could it be the rider? Could it be the geometry? What could it be? Could it be the motor? Could it be the battery? What is it? Find out on Friday. And on then on Sunday. Sunday. On Sunday. Of course, mm -hmm. Sunday. Sounds like an Sunday. interesting one. Yes, Sunday is a motor shootout. Uh, yeah. Now this is a, uh, a shootout <laughs> between all the motors on the market. Simple hill climb challenge, which is the fastest to the top? Find out nice. on Sunday. And then on Looking Monday, we've that. got a uh, first ride or a rip and a ride on the Merida E160 Limited. Um, God, I had, a, I had a, God, a challenge getting out of the box that was, Chris, honestly. <laughs> Popular bike though, Steve. I'm keen to see that one. I'd like to take a look at that. Nice very bike. lively, a very lively bike. Cool. And good fun. Right, we've had a load of comments from last week's videos where Steve did a really cool video taking a look at six things you need to know before buying your first e-mountain bike. Well, Glenn Mee has been in touch and he's saying buy a full suspension bike and spend as much as you can afford. I think a full, sus uh, full suspension bike is so suited to an e-bike. You don't feel the extra weight and your bum will thank you for it because you'll be doing the extra miles with a big smile on your face. I think that's really well said by Glenn Mee and it probably ties into what we've been discussing so far on the show. Uh, yeah. yeah, great comment. Uh, Kurt Richardson says, shop around, so many choices now. Uh, don't cheap out, you'll pay later. Well, again, Definitely. lots to think about. And I think that comes into the same thing again, doesn't it? You know, you're cheaping out on those bikes, you're definitely gonna pay the uh, price when it comes to replacing those components or the potential upgrades you might wanna do. But Luke Carolan, he's saying, do what the racers do, downgrade your transmission to a nine speed steel cassette and get a KMC nine speed chain and you'll get up to 10,000 kilometers apparently. You don't need more than nine gears on an e-bike. Well, I think that's a pretty good little tip actually, you know, downgrade and you can see all these bikes, 12 speed, 11 speed, but do you actually need that big work range of gears? You know, you've got a skinnier chain, more teeth on the cassette to go wrong potentially. So could be a thing, you know, I'd like to do that on a long-term thing, maybe a nine gears versus a 12 speed, see what gets well, gets more well, out of it. Funny, funny you should say that, Chris, but uh, on the motor shootout, we actually had uh, two bikes with the Yamaha motor with different cassettes, and you'd be surprised at the differences in time between a nine speed and 11 speed. Yeah, pretty mental. Purely ratios and stuff, I suppose. Yeah, yeah comes pretty crazy. It, sure. A couple of strong entries this week. First up is Mike, and he's designed an uh, extra battery carrier for his Scott 730. Uh, now, I'm loving the idea of this, Chris, and think if it works uh, for you, that, that's great, isn't it? Yeah, but I think there's a couple of things that I'm looking at on this picture here. So it's clamped the dropper part of the seat post, so I'm guessing you can't actually drop your seat post looking at this. And I'm wondering, you know, when that rear tire compresses under a big hit that surely that the tire is gonna hit that battery carrier and start buzzing or maybe smash the, uh, smash the actual uh, carrier off. But I think if you're you know, just riding along pretty tame style ride and you're not really using that dropper or compressing that full suspension, then it's, you know, it's great work, nice one. I'm loving that. The next yes. up. Then we have the anonymous C from Edinburgh, seating tubeless tires with no manual effort whatsoever, holding an old foot pump hose on, on his car tire. Check this out. Wow, that's cool, that's cool isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah, so he's cut the end off an old foot pump. So you've got the traditional hose with like the click connector. Uh, he's mounting the click connector to his car tire. Then the other end of the hose is connecting it to his bike. And then that air is gonna transfer over to the smaller tire until the pressure equalizes. So just waiting for that tire, to, uh, the air to transfer and pump that up. So he doesn't have to use any pumps at all. And bang, you know, looking at a video, the tire sits on there straight away, super easy with no pumping. But the only downside to it that I can see is that you're gonna to have to pump the other tire back up instead of pumping the bike tire up. So two ways yeah. I suppose, but yeah, nice little hack, nice one. Do you know, a, fr a friend of mine came around on the weekend and uh, he brought the brought full suspension bike here and uh, he said, oh yeah, I pumped the suspension up, he says, before he came over and he used a foot pump 
Do you know the old fashioned foot pumps? Yeah, yeah. You'd, you'd yeah. use one of them to pump right. air in his shock absorber. I've right. never seen anybody do that, have you? I didn't. I don't know if you could do it, could you? I think the older foot pumps and stuff, they only go up to like, I think max, like 90 PSI or something crazy, but obviously we're pumping three, 300, 350 into a shock, so. I don't yeah, know how you'd but, get on with that. But if you, if you bear in mind, he had no air pressure in it, so 90 PSI was actually better than no better PSI. Better than none, for sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah God, nice. But, I mean, an, another little tip there. It's time to move on to out and about. Now, first of all, Jonathan has been getting his flow on in this video out in Squamish, British Columbia. Looks like an amazing trail there. Uh, loads of jumps, loads of flow. He's riding his Calivo custom build and he's been on a trail called Mika's Magic, which is actually a trail named after one of the local riders who lost, lost her life earlier on. So it's a sad story there, but Jonathan clearly having a good time. Definitely. Uh, now, Chris is one of our regulars, has got himself a new ride. Looks like a nice new shiny Levo comp. He's been out bedding it in uh, in the rain on some cracking shots uh, as always in this. That's nice, yeah. Chris, isn't it? Nice shots, yeah, for sure. And from the mm. rain to the dust of Australia, this is Dave. And they were riding Levos in this video along the Margaret River in Western Australia, blasting out a 48 kilometer loop in the sun. Be better than riding the, in the mud of the UK, that's for sure. Nothing better than that, surely. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and another Oz submission here. This is Lily the Trail Dog. Oh, wow. Uh, now, uh, by the way, thanks for the great comments last week uh, on the video I did with my daughter and where she had her trail dog out and about. Anyhow, she loves getting out there and enjoying the trails. So I did this front carrier and she looks like she's having an amazing time. What type of dog is that, Chris? I'm not too sure. I'm not too hot on my dog, Steve. Not too sure. If you can let us know down in the comments box below about what dog that is, I'm not too sure. Anyway, this is David. He's been out riding from Bogus to Boys on his Trek rail. Looks like he's having a great ride there. Sandy single track to hit some drops and jumps on the way. 16 miles of tech single track. Sounds like an amazing route. Yes, and lastly, this is close to home. Jamie has been hitting the hills of Robra uh, on his new Levo after watching one of our suspension setup videos. Oh, nice one, uh, Jamie. Uh, says it feels perfect as he enjoy and is enjoying, enjoying the ups and downs on his new ride. Fantastic. Nice. Great, love to see all you guys out there enjoying your e-bikes all over the world. If you want some videos or got pictures to send in, use the upload service and we can check your ride out. And on this rainy day in Wales and England, it is time for the much awaited bike vault. Chris, this week I have got, you'll be glad to hear, a super nice cowbell, no way, nice. Bell to give us the uh, credibility to some of those fantastic shots super out nice. there. How about you kick oh. things off with, uh, with the first one? Yeah, so this is Craig. He's been out close to you, Steve. Forrester Dean on his nice new stealthy looking decoy pro 29er that is a nice shot it is a nice uh, now there's richard who is back on his first ride after breaking his neck breaking mm, his and neck his back. and the back on the bottom of this very hill he was airlifted out of here by sea king last time uh, he's out in the bracken beacons on his lever i mean i mean i mean that is a super nice but a super sad story at the same time definitely well he's on his ktm so it wasn't he's on his motorbike by the sounds of it so he's reliving the same experience as on his e-bike so yeah super nice mm. anyway this is Stu. he's taking his all beer wild fs m10 out for his first spin down in cornwall and absolutely loves the ride super nice shot oh What Sorry, next? getting carried away. We haven't had a bell on the show for ages. I mean, <laughs> we can't be a good bell, can you? Anyway, what a bell. Anyway, Neil. Is it Neil or is it Darren? No, it's Darren. Darren. It's actually Darren mm -hmm. out in his Canevo in Plimbridge Woods, Plymouth. Is this really Plimbridge Woods? Pl Chris, is there a place called Plimbridge Woods? I think there is. I've heard about the trails in there before and I've been down that way actually. So yeah, some right. good spots down there. Uh, and he's taking it easier over his lockdown period. Uh, it's nice, it's nice. It's a nice shot, isn't it? Nice, nice bike. This is Neil. Uh, he has a bike that does everything, everything for him from commuting to big adventure rides. He's out and about on a Ghost SL AMR up on the Ridgeway above Wantage. Nice shot, look at that. Looks a good ride, the Ridgeway as well. There's a lot of riding uh, going on up there. I think super nice for that one, Steve. Give it the bell. Spell it, spell it in. 
is. Tell it is. Tell it is. Right, uh, nice. Uh, now, Avon Mass is a place not too far from me. This is Ryan on his Cube Stereo 160 uh, up above Port Talbot. Obviously, Port Talbot is where the steelworks are, and he's loving. Uh, the, what's he loving? He's lo loving the natural riding and a shop here disappearing off into the industrial background. That is super nice. Next up, we've got Lee, and he's out for a rip after work on, a, on his Orbea Wild FS up in uh, South Staffordshire. Loving the buttery, smooth suspension action on his Orbea, apparently. That is a nice shot. Yes, Whoa, and from the this butteriness of South Staffordshire to uh, Santiago, uh, San Antonio, Texas. Now, this is nice color coding here going on. Uh, this is a focus uh, Sam squared. Sorry, it's actually belongs to Santiago, I should say, from San Antonio, Texas. A cool custom build. I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. Chris, that's a super nice. Super nice. I love that color coding. It looks a nice yeah, bike there. Yeah. And last one we've got is this is Mark. He's 59 year old, born again e-biker. Loves his high bike or mountain 6.0. He's out for a ride in Danville in California. I mean, look at that spot. It looks amazing spot to ride, doesn't it? That has got to be another super nice to finish things off. Absolutely, and, and you know, I thought that was a bit of a British theme going on there this week, but it got twisted round in the end and we went to across the Atlantic to America and some really nice. super nice shots there. But Chris, there's only one winner of the bike vault this week and uh, I'm gonna leave it to you to uh, name that bike. Uh, yeah, I know it's some strong entries this week, but I think it's San Diego's custom focus jam squared. Uh, it's nice to see all those parts color coded in. I think that's a great looking bike. Can't be a custom, can you? So yeah, bike of the week, go into your him. But keep them coming in, use the upload service. So that's it from this week's EMBN show. I hope that we've gone some way to answer the question about uh, bikes which are under 3,000, or should we say 3,000 pounds, 3,000 euros, 3,000 dollars, 3,000 whatever you want them to be. But uh, I'm sure there's some great bikes in there for you to feast your eyes over and have a great think about. Uh, and we, I guess we will see you next week. Chris, I'll see you uh, hopefully outside next week. Yeah, hopefully it's gonna be drying up and getting a, you know, escaping from this rain. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the show. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN and find us and give us a follow on social media too. Cheers, guys.